<laughs> All right. What's up, YouTube? All right, man. Wait, wait. Oh, give it, give it. <laughs> What's, What's up, up YouTube? <laughs> All right. Well, we're back. All right. It is two-part yeah. day. Yeah. Not a snore oh, fest. Yes, no, this one is going to be really good. Uh, uh, we went through it all. You'd be surprised how much has changed since uh, 2015. Uh, oh, yeah. 52 weeks of reefing. <laughs> uh, it is now a brand new world, right, of two part. Yeah, the uh, episode we're covering off on today from the 52 weeks is episode 31. So we're getting there. We're almost, uh, we got like 20 some to the end. Yeah. Uh, but this one was called Simple Two Part Calcium and Alkalinity Dosing. That's it. Oh. The uh, yeah, you guys can see from today's thumbnail, uh, it was called demystifying two part uh, for that episode. Uh, I think imagine? it got even more mystified over the years. Can you imagine a world where two part was actually mystifying? <laughs> no, because uh, it was true, man. Uh, when I started reefing, dude, like it was dump, you know, a teaspoon of uh, Kent Turbo Calcium in your tank and uh, pray for the better world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, there's no, uh, <laughs> there no rhyme or reason to all this stuff. So uh, now, though, demystified. So we have a core belief uh, today about two-part. Uh, we're going to tell you what the differences are about two-part today. You're going to know what makes them cost different. You're going to know uh, more information about trace elements. You're going to know uh, why they have, some of them have two parts and one of them, some of them have seven. Uh, <laughs> salinity, pH, quality. Uh, uh, right at the end here, man, we're really going to dive into that old uh, uh, ICP stuff, new, new insight yeah. on it. Uh, and, all right, so what matters most, or uh, core belief rather, mm -hmm. two part. This is our core belief. It's a long one. Two part is by far the most popular calcium and alkalinity solution out there. It isn't because it's the best. No. I, like, I, I, I doubt anybody thought that that second Two sentence part. was coming. So, <laughs> uh, it's because it's the most versatile. Yeah. Uh, there is almost no solution that it won't work in. Uh, the broad audience is why it's risen to the top. It yeah. will work for anyone. There's just so many people buying this uh, for their tanks that that is why it's so popular. I actually went in before we uh, jumped in here, looked at some sales over the last like 365 days, and mm. two part over calcium or over calquaser like threefold. <laughs> At least. Uh, <laughs> calcium reactor media like Zero. tenfold, <laughs> if uh, not more. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the most popular. Uh, and I, I think I don't even think I did anything but jump right into two part when I first started dosing my tank. That's uh, where I jumped in, and then I got gear junkie and you know calcium reactor. But you can always go back to two part. Mm -hmm. Still around here, uh, tanks are mostly uh, two part. A lot of a couple, them. Couple of calcium yeah. reactors. So uh, I'll read it one more time, then we'll move on. Uh, it is two parts the most popular out there, no question. Uh, it's not though because it's not the best uh, and. Best is really, you can go watch the video we did uh, last week, mm -hmm. but you can pick two part, you can pick Kelk a calcium reactor, Kelk slurry, Hydroxy, all these different yep, things. Yep, all of those. Formate. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a best one for each different type of reefer and type of tank. Go back and watch that, you'll find out why. Uh, but this isn't necessarily the best for everybody. It's because it's most versatile, it will work in every situation. All right, so what matters most in 2022? seven years after the first 52 weeks. Yeah, and somewhere in between those seven years, uh, we did this uh, testing, this ICP uh, MS testing that we're gonna show with you, or share with you guys here. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first thing that matters most today is that it's just calcium chloride. It's just baking soda and soda ash. There is really not much more than that. Uh, but some cost like as much as 30 bucks a month on a, like a one DKH demand. Uh, and others uh, as little as three to four dollars. So the question is, you know, if it's just calcium chloride, just bicarbonate or carbonate, what the hell are we buying for, you know, 30 bucks versus three dollars? So 10 times the cost. A sticker. And water right. in a lot yeah. of cases. No, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's yeah, a bunch a of things. It's Actually, got a fish on it. I, I'm just messing with you. There's a bunch of different things that you're going to get at different price points. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, I said the sticker because. I would wager 80% of the people watching this don't really know what they're getting when they buy the cheapest or the best or whatever. It's just like something about this brand spoke to me. Yeah, right? there's a, there's a, a bit of it, uh, probably a large portion of it that's brand affiliation or, or brand affinity. You know, like maybe I 
I love Red Sea stuff, so I'm gonna just use their Red Sea uh, two part. Hey, Jerry told me use yeah. this one. Uh, My buddy know. uses Brightwell. Look at his tank. I'm gonna use Brightwell. Yeah, uh, look at those guys. Uh, this was predominantly made off of BRS two part. Yeah. Like, all right, well, if it did that, it must work, right? But there are specific, uh, there are differences between all of them. Uh, some are really close to like, what is the difference? And maybe it's just a dollar cost versus mm -hmm. anything else. A lot of it uh, is differences in water. If like, if you might just buy in water pre mix solution, and that's why it's expensive because I have to pay for the shipping weight. Mm -hmm. uh, well, trace elements, is it, you know, purity? There's a whole bunch of different reasons. We're going to show you a bunch of these things. They're yeah. different. You, you will, at the end of today, for sure, know how to identify the right two-part for you. If you don't, <laughs> I mean, just uh, just ask. Just uh, rewind we'll, we'll just tell you. Start I, I don't know. I, you, there's zero chance, man, you should be able to make it out of this without knowing, like, how to intelligently pick the right two part for you. One of these things is going to speak to you. Uh, but, so uh, before we get to the, the, get into that, I wanna tell you the price piece, right? So the way we calculated the price when you did your investigates yeah. is, if I used one DKH a day. On a 100 uh, gallon tank. On a 100 gallon, dank, uh, gallon tank, how much would this cost me in a month? And so one DKH on a 100 gallon tank is like, I don't know, probably your average mixed tank or something, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's robust. Uh, so this is a pretty good sample size, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, uh, if you can bring up that slide, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see a whole bunch of them here, man. Uh, you can go watch this actual uh, episode. Yeah, this, the is about, this is about three years, two, two, three years old on this data. So the prices have changed, but probably not a lot that would make this, you know, flip-flop in any direction. <laughs> Especially today's inflation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so, but you can see here that uh, there's a bunch of them that range anywhere from 30 bucks right. uh, all the way down to three bucks. Right? Well, what well, you month. have to, when looking at this, you have to omit the two extremely large bars. Those are the calcium formates, not necessarily two part, uh, and they were in liquid form at the time, so those are more more expensive. But we're just, we're looking at the two part solutions here, like the aqua the aqua force is kind of a three part, um, but everything else is some sort of two part or four part. All right, so uh, we'll share with you a couple of the uh, reasons why they cost uh, different amounts of money. Right, one of them is how much you want to pay for water. Mm. I don't know, like, I don't know about you, but like, I want my water to be pretty close to free. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to pay for water. I mean, I make RODI water at home, man. This isn't a big deal. So uh, on the reef code, they have a dry, this is Brightwell's reef code. They have a dry version and a wet version. So yeah. wet version comes with water in it. Uh, dry version comes with powder. You add your own RODI water. The difference in a month is $26 a month versus eight. <laughs> Just by having your own water on hand. Yeah, and like, I guess, you know, part of it is if I went into a store, I just want the one with water. I mean, how do you not? Right. It's uh, I just want the water because I don't want to mix it up. Mm -hmm. But if you actually explain to me that this is $28 versus eight and you already have RODI water and you just add it to the jug. I'm going to be mad. Uh, I could do that. <laughs> I could so, make my own. Yeah, right. uh, Red Sea, the same thing. So they have yeah. a dry version and a wet version. Uh, it was $24 a month for the wet version and $12 a month for the dry version. The, the main difference here between these two, uh, not only that one's wet and one's dry, but the dry components are primarily, I'm guessing because of my last testing, uh, bicarbonate and the, the liquid, yeah, and the liquid is a, a mix, a bicarb carbonate mix. That, yeah, it might actually be all, or, or almost all, all carbonate. All carbonate, yeah. yeah. So that's an interesting one with uh, Red Sea is they actually the dry one doesn't really raise the pH and the wet one does. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about the pH here in a bit too, yeah. but yeah, that's definitely a differentiator between all of them as well. Uh, Tropic Marin uh, doesn't come with water in it. Uh, it's always been that way. Uh, probably because you want to ship water all over the planet. Falling method, uh, maybe. Eight dollars a month. All right, all right, so uh, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, at the time, uh, probably gone up a little bit since then, but BRS was $3 a month. Calcium and, alkalinity. Yeah, and so just for reference, like with the Tropic Marin, it's calcium chloride, pharmaceutical grade, and uh, in, that case, in their case, bicarb, yeah. uh, our case, or, Sodash, yeah. right? So uh, 
I don't know, you know a, <laughs> a sticker, I guess. Uh, but in any case, man, water being a really big difference uh, between, you know, like twenty six bucks versus you could three bucks. Triple the cost of this thing. Yeah. By getting it with water. Just in by it. having it pre mixed yeah. for you. Is what it is. All right. So trace elements. Uh, another thing that makes these things cost different. Uh, yeah. There's probably costs, and the actual elements themselves are probably not really all that much in these things. Yeah. But, uh, uh, they're trace, uh, but there is some complexity of getting the formulation right, and you know, sets people from the pack. I mean, There's if I was, approaches. yeah, if I was, uh, if I was gonna, you know, make a differenti uh, dif differentiation among like two choices for price, uh, this would probably be a deciding factor for me. Like, does it have trace elements or does it not? Then I'll pay the extra money if I want trace elements. You know, mm -hmm. that's my answer. Uh, if if not, maybe I'm young in my tank and I don't need trace elements yet. Uh, I'll choose the cheaper option. So one big change that's happened since uh, 2015 is uh, trace elements. Uh, beer rest is just is just bulk chemicals, man. Uh, it doesn't have trace elements it's in it. Basic. Uh, calcium and alkalinity. But now, man, like uh, Tropic Marin helped us formulate the stuff uh, or get the right ratio of the A and K. So they have their balling method that mm -hmm. uh, the trace elements are separate. It comes yep. in this bottle of A and K. Uh, you're going to add a few cents a month by mixing in the A and K. Mm. And maybe it's a quarter. I don't know. It's yeah. Very, very little amount, amount of money. So now you can actually add trace elements to uh, the BRS method uh, just with the A and K from Tropic Marin. Uh, and uh, similar to that, Tropic Marin has their Bali method, which has uh, three parts. A, B, and C. And uh, you mix in the A and K. But here's the, it, you know, this is an interesting question. I didn't know the answer yeah. to until probably two years ago. If you're going to give me a trace element solution, why wouldn't you, to mix into my A, part A and part B, why wouldn't you just do that in the first place? Okay, so there's a couple of reasons. One, it's really hard to mix trace elements uh, as a dry material mm. cohesively throughout the entire uh, mix. It yeah. Probably going to settle out and then you'd end up with spikes, right? Yeah, you'll notice the A and K are liquid form. Liquid. And the other three are powder form. So this to me like is where you start to mix the trace element bonus uh, of the approach to it with the fact uh, that you get to not have to pay for water, right? <laughs> yeah. So the reason that all the water ones, or most of them anyway, are that way is because it's actually kind of hard to get that homogenous mix, mm. you know? So, uh, and like Red Sea's dry and wet is the same way. It's just bicarb and calcium chloride, and then they have, you know, the trace colors in liquid mm. form on the side. Actually, we did a, an episode a long time ago about how you could use the trace oh, colors yeah. with BRS two-part as yeah, well. Yeah, based off calcium. Uh, another reason why it, I would imagine that the A and K is separate from the Tropic Marion, I mean, that's probably the, one of the biggest reasons because you're not mixing it in water. Uh, but also, I, I don't necessarily need the trace elements right off the bat. So if mm -hmm. I'm using the balling method early on, I, they, Tropic Marin says you don't use the A and K trace elements. And when you do feel like you need them or there's a certain, you know, they've got uh, some recommendations and whatnot, then it's just a little bit of A and K. And then when I get to a full blown, make maybe this BRS 160, then I'm adding a higher concentration. So, so it grows with me. Trace elements are gonna grow, yeah. not just coral, uh, yeah. any organism in the whole tank. Yeah. So right in the beginning, do you wanna be replenishing every element that grows every last pest in your tank? So mm -hmm. it's kinda cool, you separate it uh, out uh, and gives you the option to dose trace elements or not in the beginning and then when they really start getting consumed, a method of replenishing them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ESV. Reef code two, uh, 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 those things are two true two parts and they have the trace elements mixed in out of the bat. They're liquids. ESV is kind of like a slurry liquid mm -hmm. where you know, a lot of times it's shipped concentrated. Yeah. I can tell you it's a little hard sometimes to get it fully dissolved. It's kind of rocky on the bottom. The alkalinity hot water, anyway. usually. Yeah. Soak it in hot water, give it a huge shake. But uh, another one, Triton. Triton's approach to uh, tra uh, trace elements is a little different, right? Uh, I mean, on a, a whole bunch of fronts, actually. So Triton has a trace element mixed into their four part, right? But uh, the Core 7 is optimized for refugium. Right. Since it's the only one out there that is optimized for refugium, meaning likely they have increased manganese, uh, molybdenum, iron. iron, other things that, you know, a photosynthetic organism sucking out. 
So normally we'd have our corals sucking out uh, uh, just calcium, alkalinity, trace elements, probably in a reasonable ratio to each other. Uh, if you've watched actually all of Red Sea's uh, videos, they have some pretty good uh, videos on how watching how <laughs> these things actually go together and why you base trace elements on the calcium uptake. But what happens when there's something in the tank that doesn't calcify but does suck up photosynthetic elements yeah. like catamorpha? Well, right? yeah, if I've got six or seven trace elements in one bottle, how do I separate that one that mm -hmm. is uh, depleted? Yep. So that's why the core seven from them actually accounts for that because uh, refugium is an important part of their system. Mm. They also have an other methods, which is just their four part that Without doesn't do that. The refugium stuff. Uh, right. And then of course they give you the ICP and they actually sell you the individual elements in case one of them is only one of them severely depleted. Uh, you know, it's a little mad scientist for me. Yeah. Uh, but some people like that. Yeah. You know, you know the part where I, I think I'd find it valuable is like. If I was doing ICP like once a year or every uh, maybe twice a year, and I was watching like a, just a couple of things were jacked, mm. you know, like I don't know, man, zinc was one third of what it should be. Uh, I should probably correct it. Just correct some zinc yeah, real quick. I, yeah. I don't really know, man, like what it will do in the same way. I don't know what my centrum uh, A to zinc does for me either, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty certain it does something good. Uh, you know, it controls all of these metabolic functions. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, I don't I, like. I heard this story once, and I haven't actually like you know back went back and confirmed it, but I heard this story once about uh, molybdenum in Australia, and at mm -hmm. one point Australia was having a hard time producing wheat, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and they just couldn't produce enough wheat for their own population. And so uh, it turns out that the field was, uh, or the dirt was deficient in molybdenum. Now, molybdenum actually is an enzyme that controls the, uh, regulates the speed of uh, for the photosynthetic process. Uh, and I'm probably butchering that a little <laughs> bit, but uh, it, when they went back and sprayed the molybdenum on the ground, they went from not just the fact that they can now supply for their own country, but export. they can actually export it to others. All right. Well, in my tank, that means not only did I start growing the corals I want, but now I can frag for others. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, totally different thing. So I, it's hard to know exactly what those things do, but if they're severely depleted, they're probably not good. Yeah. All right. Uh, Red Sea, the most parts. Yeah, seven parts. Uh, seven parts in that there's an, uh, you know, a calcium, an alkalinity, and a magnesium solution. But then they have their uh, A, B, C, and D coral, or the uh, trace colors, or yeah, I believe that's called the, their program, mm -hmm. uh, their trace colors program, uh, based off of calcium uh, uptake. But, you know, I'm individualized. The, the one thing about the Red Sea stuff is that you know, they base the four parts off of a lead indicating element. So they have uh, test kits for iron, which is a lead indicating element for these handful of other elements. Uh, so I can adjust my dose. You know, uh, maybe I can't test for barium, but I know that if it's combined with a, a group and the lead element is depleting, it's probably depleting the same ratio, which means, you know, I can dose a little more part B. I bought into that. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, well, not only that, but also the, 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 um, uh, documentation, the, plant, the pamphlets for the one, A, B, C, and D, mm -hmm. also will tell you that A, pinks, greens, and whatever else. So they do have some of that in there too. Okay, I bought in that too. Like, I like it when you give me an actual claim, right? Like, this is gonna help blue, this yeah. is gonna help pink, this is gonna do something for you, <laughs> for your money, right? Okay, so I bought into the four parts. I bought into the leading indicators. This is the for the people that say don't dose things you can't test for. Now there's a test. This is pre-ICP. Okay, I never used it. Challenges. I just you know I just like I I just don't want to dose seven things. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, man. Uh, it's well, I can see a couple in like if you're going to use Red Sea brand only. Uh, you know, then you're after dose the seven parts. If I'm using like my BRS Pharma without any trace elements and I wanted a trace element solution that I could test for, just adding on to the four, adding on the four Red Sea elements would work, but now, I mean, now I'm at a six part, so. Yep. 
I will tell you this much is uh, also the red, blue, green bit bought in all the way. And here's the thing, man. I've always wanted to do a BRS TV and uh, uh, investigates where you know we dose you know the the red one to a tank and not to the other one. Does it actually do red? Does it actually bring out blue? Does it actually bring out green? Uh, let's find out. Uh, that just hasn't been prioritized over <laughs> everything else. But here's the bit. If it actually did that, yeah. this one's for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I, I, I said, you know, bring out brilliant pinks, and I went from a dull pink to a bright pink. Um, dude, I'm in. If I take a testosterone supplement that says I'm going to have big giant muscles you know, mm -hmm. and all this other stuff, then and I take it and it actually works, yeah, that's what I want. I don't feel like a lot of people are going to go through the six months that would require to, to, to test do that, that. experiment. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say that we will at some point in time. Uh, we got a lot of stuff in the books, so <laughs> uh, we may. Uh, we will find it maybe in the uh, what matters most in 2027. Yeah, trace <laughs> elements. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's the different approaches to trace elements. Uh, again, BRS originally zero, still can be zero really cheap. Uh, for just a tiny, tiny bit more, you can add in uh, the A and K from Tropic Marin, emulate a more affordable version of the bra a balling. Uh, balling can do the same thing, obviously. Uh, the ESV and Reef Code, two parts. Uh, Triton, uh, super advanced, down down the individual elements, and Red Sea with precursor elements yep. and actual claims. So one of those probably speaks to you uh, and says, hey, man, that one's for me. What, though, in all of this, why so many damn parts? <laughs> and I, and like, what's the difference between two got, parts, three parts, four parts, seven parts, all those parts? I got one part solutions like calcium formate and calcwasser. I've got two parts. I've got three parts. Uh, you know, I want the one thing yeah. out here. Every new part you add either means another dosing pump or another thing I have to dose by hand. Hand dosing, yeah. Right. Actually, a lot of the true parts are probably three parts you just don't add, put the magnesium on a doser. Like our original, our, ours is, you know, once you finish a gallon of alkalinity and calcium, then dose, you know, this much uh, magnesium, yeah. Okay, you wanna know a secret? Uh. I've never said this out loud. <laughs> Who knows if that's true? No, well, I have <laughs> never, ever, ever followed the BRS recipe at magnesium. No, nah, I haven't either. No, you I know just what? test magnesium, and if I need it, I go to the calculator and I dose it. I dose it the right amount, right? Yeah. So, like, instead <laughs> of at the end of the jug, uh, do I go and dose the 20 ounces? Nah, once a month, I just test the magnesium and I adjust it to what I think it that be. was really hard. I don't know if that ever did really come through very clearly in, like, our dosing instructions or anything like that. Is that that part didn't really resonate with me. It's like, okay, the magnesium, yeah, these are done. My automatic reaction is to dose magnesium. No, I it never I, was. I just let me just let out the secret. <laughs> so I'd like to hear from you guys actually. Do you dose uh, a gallon of BRS, both of them at the end? Go dose the 20 ounces of magnesium like you're supposed to. Or do you just rely on your test kit and, and correct? Uh, that is what I did. The majority is going to be on I'm the done. second part. Okay. Uh, so the difference between all the parts, uh, the first one is true two parts. Uh, are generally uh, formulated for ease of use, meaning that uh, the concentration of my calcium, the concentration of my alkalinity component are going to be equal, whether it's bicarb or whether it's soda ash or carbonate. Uh, I mean, these are designed to be, if I need to dose 20 mils of this, I'm also at the concentration I need to dose 20 mils of that. It's super easy. Yeah, uh, in almost every case, two parts are actually easier to dose than three parts or four parts. That's true. There are some exceptions, uh, right? So like what if I wanted to go ahead and increase uh, my, ma or my uh, calcium, right? But my magnesium was spot on. Well, now I can't do that mm. because my true two part has magnesium mixed in it and now I'm dosing magnesium and I'm gonna raise that as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the same thing is true. What if I want to raise my magnesium but not my calcium? Well, now I gotta go buy a whole nother third part anyway, right? Uh, and so, I don't know. You know, most of the people that are going to dose true two parts also buy magnesium chloride and have that around. So they're kind of got three parts, they're just not emitting it. Yeah, uh, and I don't know if we ever had a recipe or anything to put magnesium in the calcium, magnesium chloride into the calcium, did we? No, you can uh, mix the magnesium chloride in there, but like ideally what you would do is mix, well in this case you would just mix magnesium chloride in with the calcium chloride, you'd yeah. be just fine. 
it's if you want to maintain that sulfate, you can't mix that in there because calcium sulfate precipitates out. You'll see a, a big thick layer of precipitate like this in, in three seconds. If you took magnesium Just sulfate poof. and put it in the calcium. Yeah. Yeah. The calcium chloride and magnesium sulfate do not go together. Not good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, the three parts like we just mentioned now, uh, generally keep the magnesium separate. Uh, this is convenient for larger changes when I yeah. want to change calcium and magnesium independently. This is probably what most of us are familiar with is an alkalinity jug, a calcium jug, and then there's just a magnesium jug that I use occasionally. There's one different, one that stands out from the rest though. Uh, Tropic Marin's balling method is three different. Part. It's a three part, but the third part is to manage the salinity issue that comes from two parts. Everything in salt water minus the salt. Yep, almost. Uh, you know, it's also minus calcium and alkalinity. Yeah. So yeah. probably uh, minus phosphate. We're gonna get into that in just a minute, but like, I, I, the easiest way to explain this fault of two part is what happens is I'm adding, you know, essentially when I do a whole gallon of each, I'm essentially going to add, you know, four and a half cups of salt, salt to the tank. Okay. Uh, and Chloride from calcium to sodium from uh, bicarb. Imagine what happens to salinity over time, right? It's just going to keep rising and going up and mm. up and up. Okay, so, uh, you know, obviously it's not truly four and a half cups because some of that's calcium and alkalinity that gets consumed, but you can get the point anyway. Yeah. So. In that case, you know, the thought process is, oh, well, sweet, you know, I'll get up to, uh, you know, 37 parts per thousand of uh, salt, uh, and then I'll just dilute it. You mm -hmm. know, to dilute it, I'll take change. some water out, and I'll put fresh water in. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do it with water change again, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's the best method. So I would just take out the uh, uh, some water and dilute it back down. Okay, so now your PPT is right, the salinity is right, but what I did is I didn't just dilute the salinity, man. Calcium, I just diluted calcium, alkalinity, alkalinity potassium, zinc, yeah. uh, everything just went down. And every time I dilute that, it's going to zigzag all of these things down over and over and over yeah. again. Now I can fix that with calcium and alkalinity because I have a calcium and alkalinity jug and magnesium, but everything else, no. And that's why in that part C, what happens is they had everything else in the part C other than calcium, alkalinity, and sodium chloride to compensate for the fact that you are intentionally going to dilute this thing. Either, you know, like the Triton method kind of dilutes it by just mm. running your skimmer super wet. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know if that ever works exactly that way, but, uh, but everybody's going to have to dilute it. Now, the one exception to that is if I do enough water changes to combat the whole salinity issue. Uh, you might, that never, might never see it. You might not ever see it. But here's the thing, is it costs like almost nothing, man. It adds like a dollar to the month to do it right. To run part C? To do it right, I guess. Okay. So I, I would say this is the only one of the bunch that had a thought leading process to how do we account for a very real issue that is a downfall of a two-part when everybody else just kind of does this? <laughs> you know, uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know, that's kind of a cool part of their three-part, not magnesium. In fact, in their, th their two-part, actually, the magnesiums, uh, they treat it the same way that Randy and I actually yeah. do, which is you, you just fix magnesium fix periodically when you need to. Okay, next one. Uh, uh, so parts. that was a uh, true two part, a three part, and another three part. This time we're on the four part, and one of the only four parts uh, I can think of is the Triton. Uh, uh, it's, it's a four part in that you have a calcium uh, component, you have a magnesium component, and then you have these 3A and 3B alkalinity components that they say I can mix together in a single you know, reservoir rather than have four reservoirs and four dosing pumps. I just have to dose double the amount because of the calcium concentration. All right, so this is what I think is happening here. I've never gotten 100% confirmation mm. out of them on this one, but here is the thing about two part is everybody, it's just a million times easier to understand if I dose the exact same amount of each one, Easy. right? So if I have to always remember that yeah. this one is triple this one, uh, well, I'm always going to have to three times a dose, and it's just like that. way more, every time you change it, more opportunity to mess it up. Oh, I'm going to mess it up, yeah. Okay, it's not difficult math, but like everybody would just rather do the same amount. Okay, 
Well, the reality is, is you can make calcium solution way more strong or, or uh, potent than uh, the alkalinity. Alkalinity just caps out how much will dissolve. Yeah. So if I make four parts and two of them are alkalinity, I can make the calcium twice as strong <laughs> uh, and then dose equal amounts because I'm dosing double channel alkalinity. And that's what I think is happening here. Yeah. Uh, and that's why you can actually dose, mix the two, 3A, uh, 3A, 3A, B together and just dose twice as much. So it would be 100 milliliters a day of calcium and 200 of this one. Because it's really 200, two times 100 or 200 is the same. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, uh, I, I mean, I can't fault that uh, because it does allow you to change out your calcium solution half as often. Mm, that's true, yeah. yeah. So, uh, in that case, I understand totally why they do it, but I think that is why you get four parts out of the whole thing. Uh, trace elements mixed in various ones. Now there is Red Sea's seven part. So, Red Sea's seven part, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and then the four trace colors. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, you know... Uh, you can, like you said, you know, we have here presumably better control over each element. Uh, I would say that Triton win, you know, gets that one because I have each in, in individual element. But uh, seven part, would I put them all on a on a, its own separate dosing pump? Probably not. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, well, it's a lot of dosing pumps, a lot of noise, all that other, sh all that you know, mm -hmm. reservoirs and things like that. But uh, you know, with this one, it's it's a little more attractive in that uh, to use because I'm not going to get dosing pumps. But you know, I can take the A, B, C, and D, calculate you know how much I need for a seven day period, and then on the uh, uh, once a week, actually dose that amount. Yeah, instead hand. of like daily, but I'm still dosing everything by hand. I'm not going to go buy four more dosing pumps just to put these on dosing pumps. Okay. Personally, no. Uh, so here, here's my problem with this approach. I get it. I understand it. I understand the like leak precursor elements. I understand also that you like some of these things, you might be able to add more trace elements and you'd be able to add it if you had mixed them into the calcium and alkalinity because mm -hmm. you're not dealing with precipitation issues. So it might actually be a more robust solution. But I'm going to wager, and, and like again, uh, the community here, I love to hear on these things, is trace elements are one of those things where you don't really like dump it in and see an immediate result. Oh, yeah, not even. It's the kind of thing of like you'll see a prolonged result of doing this right. And would you even notice, man, if you got 50% you less growth? No. I, I'm not <laughs> sure you'd be able to measure and notice that, but you certainly want it if I told you that you could have 50% more growth. But you wouldn't notice and so like because it's not really doing something instantaneous and it requires more work am i going to remember to dose that stuff perpetually every single time mm. every week and for me the answer is no no uh, i i can't even do the triton method a hundred percent completely yeah. but yeah so I, i'd be curious to hear uh, how you guys feel about that one but uh, you know, this is the different approaches to, you know, uh, trace elements. And by the way, he, the $24 with Red Sea, I don't think included the cost of all of the, oh, the trace uh, elements. No, no. You uh -uh. have to add that back in. Yeah. Too. You'd have to add the yeah. four part. Back That's in. probably true of most of these actually. Hmm. So, uh, uh, in that case, those are those things. Now salinity, salinity. We actually just discussed a second. All of these things raise salinity. It's All of them are adding excess sodium and chloride. Nature of the beast. It's this the common problem with two part. The yep. only one, uh, the only calcium alkalinity solution that has this issue. So it's Tropic Marin. And so I would say you like are paying in this case, you know, for a better chemistry solution. Like a solution that accounts for, you know, the issues from this method and has solved them. The only thing I'd say, though, is like when you say paid for it, it's it's amongst the cheapest. So at eight bucks a month, uh, I don't know if you really paid for it or not. Oh, that oh the fact that Tropic Marin already is the only one that really accounts for this. Yeah, mm. I, I think that you no, paid, you just got benefit yeah. and you didn't really have to pay a whole lot for it. Not really. Not at all. Hardly. 
Yeah, I don't know. well, uh, you know, up to you. So this is, uh, I, I guess I, I group in though, BRS right in there with this, and I'm not gonna take credit for it because all we're doing is supplying the chemicals for Tropic Marin's method. So if you use the BRS soda ash <laughs> and the uh, BRS calcium chloride and then their uh, part C, you actually kind of get the solution to that problem. Uh, you get also the trace elements A and K and you get it for the cheapest price of all of the stuff yeah. out there. Yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, I don't think the salinity issue has ever been a decision factor for me on choosing like two part calcium reactor, caulkwasser. Uh, I dosed two part for the longest time and I guess I just never really paid attention that if it raised salinity that much. Plus I was doing, you know, you know, 30, 40% water changes. So here's the thing, is most of you don't know to look for it. Yeah. So I did, I just didn't know what I was looking for. And so uh, occasionally I would test the water and be like, oh, why am I at 36? Yeah. Oh man, what happened? I'm at 37, yeah. you know? Uh, especially like if I had a really awesome summer full of barbecues, man, I didn't do the water changes like I was supposed <laughs> to. Like all of a sudden at the end of summer, man, I'm at 37. And then I go dilute it back down by taking water, uh, uh, salt water out, put fresh water in. And then I just didn't know that yeah. what I was doing was lowering all the other levels. And then I didn't know the effect of that over three years and how easy it is to actually correct for it and the fact that it's just a buck. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, I, I don't know. You, you know will you, do you need to solve that? No. But can you for a buck? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right, pH. This is an interesting one because you just did an experiment yeah. on this or investigates, and now we have the answer. Yeah, uh, let's pull up the bicarb chart. There oh, well, before you pull it up, oh. uh, come back. Oh, oh no. there we go. <laughs> okay, so before you come back, there are two parts all have different pH boosts. Some yeah. are almost zero, some are halfway, and some all the way. Yeah, go ahead. So, so like, uh, and what we know now is corals calcify way, 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 way faster at higher pHs. And uh, one of the things that you'll see is coralline algae grows like mad mm. and when you get up to 8.3. Oh yeah. I remember my, I had to send a, like a pH probe back uh, because uh, it failed and I sent it to him. He's like, dude, I've never seen coralline algae. It looks like you've owned this for three years and like I had it for three months. <laughs> uh, and uh, then it was interesting because we did a Kalkwasser uh, video the other day and uh, one of the comments when is there is be prepared for calcification or precipitation because you're going to see it on everything. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did. I, when I ran 8.3, man, you'd see it show up on your pumps. You'd see it show up on all kinds of stuff. It was real because not only is it calcifying better inside the coral, it's also on warm things like heaters and stuff. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. So if you want to grow your corals faster, you want to grow coralline faster, uh, hit 8.3. If you're not at 8.3, one of these two parts will help you uh, more than others and you're about to see which one it is so you can make an informed decision. Most of the ones based on bicarb or what we presume is bicarb yeah. will have almost no impact, starting with these. Yeah, so this is uh, the group that we tested, uh, what I called the bicarb group or, or majority bicarb group. There's some might have a little bit more, like Tropic Marin had a boost here, but they also, uh, they also claim on the packaging and on the you know, description that for Tropic Marin that Part B is, is a mixture of uh, bicarb and carbonate, different blends, probably mostly bicarb though. So let me explain what you're looking at here. So on that right column is the difference column. Uh, what you're, you're looking here is to see how much a single, single DKH. DKH. We, tried, we went and raised a test uh, group of water, a single DKH, and saw how much it would raise the pH. So if I had raised a, or uh, added this to replace a single DKH in a day, mm -hmm. how much can I expect it to raise the pH? Well, the Red Sea Reef Foundation Dry, which is uh, different than the wet, the wet you'll see in just a second, mm -hmm. added a minuscule drop in pH, almost like Within margin the, of error. Yeah, margin of error for the probe. Uh, b b sodium bicarbonate, you know, I would have presumed actually would have been the exact same thing of negative 0.01 or whatever, uh, but it came out at zero. Uh, the Aqua Forest KH Plus had a, a 0 0.1. 0 and 0 0.01, yeah, barely anything. The Tropic Marin Part B also, I mean, I think it says right on there, bicarb. Yeah, right. well, yeah, it says a, a blend, but it's probably a majority 
bicarb. Not probably ninety ten, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it has very very minimal impact uh, on pH. So it doesn't. And, and, and no, the poof test too is another thing that we tested just to make sure that you know when you dose, uh, you know when you dose car bicarb or when you dose carbonate like soda ash. Uh, you'll get the white poof. You'll get the cloud in the tank and all this. And so what we, you know, what we did with these four that you just saw was, well, okay. So if it has a little pH group uh, increase, let's see if it has a white poof also, because that's kind of an indicator. Uh, neither of those four did, but the next group. Oh, hold on. Oh. Who is this one for? Right. Oh, who is a bicarbs for? So you would say, oh, it ah, didn't yeah, raise yeah. the pH. Oh, it must be terrible. Well, That's not true. People who already have, you know, the uh, stellar pH, not chasing pH at all. This is probably a good one for you. Yeah. Uh, beginners, it, for sure. Yeah, if you're a beginner, man, you don't want to worry about overdosing the same degree because actually the pH will probably kick you in the butt faster than high alkalinity. Than high alkalinity, yeah. Uh, so it's great for beginners. It's also great for people who want to dose by hand because you're not going to shock the system by yeah. jumping the you know pH three points uh, or three tenths of a point in a second. Yeah, it's bicarb that you would use to make those big changes. So like if I'm at six DKH and I need to get, and I'm, I'm targeting like nine, uh, I would not make any corrections that big with uh, soda ash because it's the big pH bike. Yeah, so let me just reiterate. Bicarb and the low or almost no change in pH, great if you're making larger changes all the time. In fact, even if you're a soda ash two-part user, I would tell you have a jug of bicarb around just for when you want to make a one oh, decade yeah. change at any specific time. Uh, and then also great for new people, also great for people who are dosing by hand and just like don't want to deal with uh, precipitation. They don't want to deal with spiking the pH. This is way, soda ash and the pH ones are way better used as a slow drip out of a dosing pump. By hand, bicarb is your guy. Yeah, that's uh, one part here that we put down that you really didn't, uh, you don't really capture the difference between, or like understand the difference between bicarb and, car and carbonate soda ash is, you know, soda ash you're always warned all the time. Dose in a high flow area. Like don't, in, when, when you see that white cloud in your tank from soda ash, that is a white cloud of concentrated pH and high alkalinity. Uh, so that, you know, that localiz localized high pH might cause some problems. Well, it's causing like an immediate precipitation that then redissolves. Yeah. But like you can see it and you can see it in the pH spike, you know, mm -hmm. but it, like it is a visual representation of what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see it with like all of the two parts you're about to see in a second uh, that are based on presumably all or at least partial uh, sodium carbonate. Uh, and so in that spirit, there's a bunch of them that will raise your pH. Uh, here they are. So same thing uh, we did here, started with that exact same water, Ra used enough to raise the alkalinity by 1 dKH. Uh, and here's what we get for the differences. You know, the uh, ATI essentials, possibly, they, a lot of these do not have share their, uh, their data or MSDS sheets or uh, SDS sheets or anything like that. So we kind of have to make some educated guesses here. Uh, we do know that bulk reef supply with soda ash is 100 is, you know, sodium carbonate. Uh, we also know that uh, I think Red Sea called themselves or had a blend, but mostly carbonate as well. But uh, there you see Triton and, and Red Sea at the top for the pH boost. Yeah, so there's two groups in here. Uh, there's ATI and two little fishes that uh, have a, a marginal increase. There's a big group of uh, the 0.2 increase of Brightwell Reef Code B, Brightwell uh, Liquid, uh, B Ionic, and uh, uh, BRS Soda Ash. And then there's Triton and Red Sea that edge it out just a little bit mm -hmm. by raising the pH, you know, four hundredths of a point more. Uh, <laughs> I, probably not in a meaningful manner. But now that you know that, I think you can pick, you know, a use the pH. This is a differentiator between, you know, all the two parts on the market, you know, between the trace elements, between the water, between uh, how many parts there are, how many dosing pumps you need to buy, uh, between the salinity issues, uh, between uh, the pH issues. And you're starting to hone in and like, oh, one of these is starting to speak to me. All right. The next piece that we're going to talk about, though, is sodium hydroxide. Uh, those ones, man, are very interesting because this is a DIY solution. Now. Yeah, there's uh, two hydroxides that uh, people use in the hobby. The most common one, calcium hydroxide, the caulk washer. 
Uh, and then there's sodium hydroxide, which is also known as lye, which is lye. So here's the, lye has come in as a uh, new entrance, right? Yeah. Uh, like in the past year or two. Yeah. Uh, and so it, you know, does. It, it raises the pH. When we were talking about 0.2, uh, we're going to go up quite a bit more than that, like all the way double, like 2.4, right? Yeah. Okay, but it's lye. Right, and you, I, we don't have any commercial two parts out there that are using lye for this, mm -hmm. uh, and this is probably why. And this is way too small to read, but uh, we'll show you. Like this came up. Uh, this is uh, nobody's gonna be able to read. That. No. <laughs> uh, but if you go search for the MDS of this thing, I mean, I'm gonna re reach uh, in here. This is uh, skin contact with sodium hydroxide uh, will cause deep, severe burns with deep ulcerations. They appear soft and moist and very painful. Uh, although contact with concentrated solution causes pain and irritation within three minutes, uh, contact with dil dilute solution. Eye exposure may produce diffuse or localized blood vessel clots and accumulation of fluid in the eye, softening and slothing. I mean, it just goes on and on between respiratory, dermal, ocular, gastrointestinal, <laughs> all of these different things. It is dangerous. There's a reason why if you go pick up sodium hydroxide or lye at the store, there's a skull and crossbones on the front, man, and it's like danger, 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 right? <laughs> Uh, it is a. It is readily available at your hardware stores and things like that. Somebody People, told me Home Depot actually pulled it off the shelf. You can't buy it there anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think we have Menards. It's a hardware store here uh, in Minnesota. Uh, they have it. There's a few hardware stores out ha that have it. It's uh, often sold as like a, a drain cleanser or some Drano and you know these types of borax and things like that. A bulk of the chemical that's in there for the cleaning purpose is lye or sodium hydroxide. Okay, so danger aside, this is why some people are choosing to DIY this. Uh, show the slide. Yeah. So uh, the, the, you have calcium hydroxide kalkwasser with the 0.41 pH increase, sodium hydroxide with the 0.41 increase. The difference here is that, you know, okay, so it took five milliliters of, uh, of soda ash to raise the, our body of water by one dKH. Uh, it took five or 50 times that uh, for calcium, for uh, Kalkwasser to raise that same dKH. Where we had to dose five mils to raise uh, soda ash, we had to dose 150 or so mils of Kalkwasser to get that same dKH. Granted, it raised the pH up by 0.41, uh, but that is a big difference between the, hydro or the uh, Kalkwasser and the two part. Uh, the sodium hydroxide, the lye, is about one for one dose for soda ash. If I wanted to raise you know, uh, one dKH, I would use about, for the R example, I would use one, uh, five mils of soda ash. I'll probably use five mils of sodium uh, hydroxide. It's really attractive in that I can match this to like uh, my uh, standard two part. Like I'm dosing this much calcium, I'm dosing this much alkalinity. I was super attracted to this. When I first read it, mm -hmm. I, I think I stumbled upon Randy Holmes Farley's uh, article on this. It might have been somebody else the day before, I don't remember. Yeah. But uh, I was like, ah, oh, dude, Kelkwasser level two part with, or, or Kelkwasser level pH increase mm -hmm. with concentration level two part, meaning I got two jugs instead of constantly <laughs> filling up big giant you know, lime water bins. Yeah. This spoke to me like, mm. man, this is the future. And I immediately went out because, like, I, I don't want to buy lye uh, from Home Depot and put it in my reef tank. Right, right, right. And we immediately went out looking for uh, pharmaceutical solutions. I did. But after thinking about it for a minute, mm. I, I just had to stop. Like, this is not responsible to do for, it's responsible for me to do. So if mm. I chose to take this risk on, I understood the risk uh, uh, of using this chemical in my household and in my reef tank. Taking the proper procedures. I could do this myself, yeah. but would I blindly recommend it to other people? Answer no. Yeah, that's tough because that, that's a lot of the conversation that you see around sodium hydroxide doesn't really address that. that can do you try I trust my uh, laboratory you know uh, prowess and uh, things in the in the lab my procedures 
Uh, but it's, yeah, it is so hard to recommend this to somebody. So behind the scenes, I've had this conversation 50 times, right? And I've had it with a bunch of people that are like, hey, you're just fear mongering lie. You know, it's uh, not that uh, dangerous, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Like all I can think of is uh, the fight club and, you know, kid dude's burn his <laughs> hand. I don't know if it's that severe or not, but at the same time, this is the conversation I've had, and 50 out of 50 times, man, it has gone this way, mm. right? All right, dude, I totally get that you understand how to mix acids and bases with water. You know how to do it safely. You're wearing goggles. You're, you know, using gloves, and you know to put the stuff away yeah. so that nobody in your household will ever get a hold of it. Heat and resistant. yes, there's other chemicals they shouldn't get a hold of as well, but this one quadruple so. Uh, all right. Can you understand though why the person that is just like stumbling across your thread on the internet uh, and say, hey, you know, if you use it safely, it's a great option, isn't getting the concept that if mm. you get it in your eye, man, you may go blind. Uh, if that you spill a little on the floor and uh, your daughter crawls across it, man, she may not get immediately burned. It's going to soak in and all of a sudden create a, a totally fucking different, devastating problem. And yes, I just swore because <laughs> I feel that way. It's heavy. Uh, like, uh, it is, like, understand the the scope of when you give advice to other people mm. like what is, what you're doing right wait it's it's like you had, like we said here when we were discussing this earlier uh, just before we came in here you know there's 10 times the risk uh, involved here versus all of the other stuff that we use and we know that works um, but you know are you willing to assume 10 times the risk for five, 10 years, like, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe your procedures are really good today, but over 10 years, is there a chance that you become lackadaisical and something could happen? I can do everything right once. If I have to do it 400 times, not only mix it right, but put it away right, never spill it right, the answer goes way, 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 way down. There's a chance. And 50 out of 50 times, man, the people I've talked to, not only believed that, yeah, this isn't actually a good thing to uh, uh, just, you know, recommend to random people on the internet. It's good enough to recommend to your friend where you can actually have this kind of more depth conversation of what the risks oh, are. Yeah. But almost all of them also said, you know what, this isn't the right solution for me either because mm. uh, on a five-year timeline, I'm not going to do this perfect either. Well, and it's not like, uh, it's not like we're poo-pooing the idea of sodium hydroxide wide open to the uh, to this concept. I love I, it, man, I, actually. I am really attracted to this concept. Uh, and, you know, it, for me in the office here, uh, you know, maybe in my video I said I, I would use it here in the office. You know, if it were me and I'm not spreading the information, I just want to try it out myself, yeah, I'll probably do it. Take your own risk on your own self. Yeah, yeah. but not recommend it to somebody. The one question, and I don't know the answer to this question, maybe somebody else can answer this one, uh, is what would happen, man, like, because a big part of this is actually the mixing process, right? Oh, yeah, in so contact with the powder. I got to get the powder and the mm, water and not spill it aerated, and all the other stuff. Yeah. I don't want to breathe it. Yeah. I don't want to get in my eye, yeah, splashing, yeah. stirring, and all that stuff. Okay. What if one of the aquarium manufacturers out there, you know, like what if a Red Sea, Triton, or one of the other guys comes out and says, hey, we pre-mixed it in a liquid. I'm curious how, mm. how you know, toxic or you know, how dangerous is that liquid in there? What if it was like partially kind of like sealed and has just a dosing tube that you Already can connect to the top? Like, is there a way you could make this thing, safe. you know, do what you want to do yeah. and safe and be a win for everybody? I'm sure there is. There's got to be, right? Yeah. Uh, and also doesn't have me dumping, you know, stuff off the shelf from Home Depot into my tank. I mean, you can... Uh, Reefers already buy pre-mixed liquid solutions and have it shipped and all this other stuff for just standard calcium and alkalinity. I could see, uh, you know, people are, at, I mean, I would buy a liquid, pre-mixed liquid solution if it came with all those safety measures and things like that. If I learned more about it and felt like, you know what, dude, that's, there's no way, man. Like, if I didn't tell my wife, mm. then maybe. But if my wife knew that this was actually dangerous and our yeah. three kids were around, dude, zero chance, man. In fact, if she found out I did that without her knowing, man, she'd be super pissed. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Uh, sorry, Melissa. Uh, all right. So uh, next one, dude. 
Well, all of these things are pH, by the way. So bicarb, none, uh, obvious benefits of all the soda ash ones. And if you want to be a trailblazer and you understand the risks and uh, you heard everything we had to say and said, you know what, this is for me, uh, then uh, the lye and sodium hydroxide is the new trailblazer solution out there. You can go check that out. But if, before you go to lye, for gosh sake, go find out if Kelkwasser and lime water is actually the right solution for you because it has the exact same benefits, <laughs> oh. uh, but uh, doesn't have all the same risks and dangers. As yeah, it, that's, b- it. that's bullet number one that we uh, have here for sodium hydroxide. It's double the pH, just like caulk, but consider caulk if, that, if, that, if that's what you want, if that's gonna serve your purpose. Yes, uh, uh, why well, pick the most <laughs> dangerous thing on the table? Yeah. Okay, the next thing on here, so uh, you, you got the pH salinity, you got the different trace amount of parts, elements. trace elements, you're paying for water, you're yeah. not paying for water. Quality. So this is something that happened in the middle of, uh, between 2015 and 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went and sent out all of this stuff to a lab. Spend. I think at a website of yeah. the lab we went to here. To that uh, NSI. NSI. Yep. Uh, so uh, you can bring up the blue, the yeah. blue NSL the one right there. Uh, so this one, uh, well, this, oh, we, how much did you spend? Twenty thousand. I think it's twenty grand. Twenty grand to test all these chemicals. Yeah. So we send them out to to True uh, MS uh, or ICP MS testing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, independent lab. They sent us back these little sheets. Uh, uh, the one right the, to the, the left. The signed of it. one right next to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Send back these little sheet. The lab technician signs every last one of them as a reporting officer. Gives us the data on these things. We now know now like what's in these things. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you the short of it. Like part of uh, what you're paying for is all the things you just described. But yeah. if you're going to talk about like if I'm going to pay for quality. I think purity absolutely is part of that thing. You can debate whether or not you need that purity, right? Uh, If you want or whether or not it's worth the cost if you want. Uh, But I don't think you can discuss quality without having a discussion about purity Mm -hmm. uh, or specifically impurities. Now, the difference in this case is the cheapest option is the purest option. Yeah, it was so, a surprise. Uh, like, I don't have to have the debate of whether or not it was worth it or not. Mm-hmm. In one exception. Uh, okay, so we sent this out to uh, calcium. We sent it out on alkalinity. We sent it out on magnesium. There's whole episodes and on this. And Kelkwasser. Yeah. Uh, and Kelkwasser, too. I don't want to bore you with the whole thing, so we'll just give you the highlights here. Calcium. Uh, starting with calcium, right? So calcium, uh, you're seeing the green lines. This is the areas where one of these things did it best. Mm -hmm. Uh, So BRS, the first column, Aquarium One is a brand of, well, a leading brand of uh, uh, calcium in our industry, Brightwell. Aquarium Bulk One, uh, uh, this now doesn't exist. Dr. Foster's? Yeah, so I'm willing to tell you who it is. It's Dr. Foster's. There's Mrs. Wages, and then uh, there's Preston Preston. driveway heat. <laughs> this is just stuff to throw on the ice, right? Calcium chloride. Okay, so uh, just out of respect, I don't want to go test other people's stuff and throw them on the bus. Yeah. But since Doctors Foster doesn't exist, so be it. Uh, okay, so there's big, huge differences here. You know, uh, aluminum, 0.2 mm-hmm. versus 10 times that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, arsenic, man, way is the best in arsenic. Uh, the BRS one is the lowest in copper, uh, the lowest in iron. It's the lowest in uh, lithium. It is the lowest in uh, silica. Zinc. Zinc. It's the lowest in all of these things. And some of them. Our man, calcium is the lowest in calcium. Yeah, it's because it's a uh, dihydrate. <laughs> uh, and then if you look at some of these things, man, like the, you know, there's like all kinds of impurities mm. in all this stuff. I mean, some of them are 160 parts per million lithium, dude. Yeah, uh, that's huge. Yeah, 960 so, parts per million magnesium. Yeah, so magnesium but is magnesium's a... But magnesium's different because Brightwell has... Is that oh, why there's 12, 300? Yeah, here? because they probably have it added add to, some into in theirs. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's a little unfair with the, with the Brightwell one because they actually add some trace elements into this one, so yeah. the rest of them don't. Kind of skews the result. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's big, big differences between, you know, all of the impurities that are in the calcium. All right. So there is an exception to that, uh, the alkalinity one. The alkalinity one, 
there isn't that big a difference between you know many of mm. the different options out there. Maybe you could exp uh, uh, make it bigger for us. Okay, so in this case, you can see that there is a lot of green. Yeah, uh, everybody's doing really well across the board here. Yeah, everybody is the best in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, the A ampersand E1H. That's Arm & Hammer. Yeah, this is Arm & Hammer, literally a box I got off oh. the shelf, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So, uh, and the washing soda is like sodium Arm and Hammer washing carbonate, soda. Carbonate, yeah. It says 100% washing so or, or sodium, sodium carbonate, carbonate in the back, but it also smells like soap. Uh, <laughs> exactly. so yeah. Probably because it comes off the same line and they didn't clean it yeah. in between. Uh, but, like, there are differences. Mm. You know, uh, uh, the BRS stuff, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01 lead, where 0 0.2 in uh, the, arm and, or the aquarium bulk there. Uh, you know, four times as much even in the Arm & Hammer off the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, arsenic I is the lowest in, in ours as well. Uh, and, you know, this is sodium carbonate, so it's a little different than the bicarb that they have in, in some of these things. Yeah. But you can see, especially versus that aquarium bulk option, you know, this was a way better option. Mm -hmm. Now, would I use the Arm & Hammer in here? And the answer is probably I would, you know. I mean, it's, it's got 12 parts per million silica in it versus zero with the BRS. It's got a, a handful of different other things to it, but it isn't the biggest difference in quality. Yeah, uh, um, I mean, the way that Arm & Hammer looks, it's like, well, I mean, Arm & Hammer's actual uh, an food, option. Food grade, yes, it's not as good as the pharmaceutical grade uh, soda ash, but it's not that far away. Uh, and so in terms of quality, if I was going to save a fortune, if, I, if it was 30 bucks a month, uh, then I'd go Arm & Hammer. If the difference is uh, $3 a month, yeah, I don't If know. that, not even, I don't even know if it's $3 a month. Actually, I don't even know if it was cheaper. At a, one, at a one DKH, I believe in that video, you had mentioned that between all of these different options, the largest difference, I think, from one to another was like uh, maybe $1.13 at, at oh, max okay. uh, a month for that same one DKH uh, consumption rate of okay. a daily. I don't think it's gonna be that much difference. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, in terms of quality, now there is one though, magnesium. And there's one thing I learned in all of this stuff is magnesium in general so nasty. is just dirty. Just right? dirty. We got visuals and we have the data. Okay, so our, you know, Back, actually, I'm going to give you a little time lapse here. We're going to go not just down to 2015. We're going to go back to like 2004. Oh. Okay, so uh, way back when, uh, oh, yeah, we got to share that mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, way back when, 2004, it was Dow Flake. It was this special Dead Sea magnesium that mm. was the only one. And this whole company is founded in the fact that in Minneapolis or happens to be a distributor for the Dead Sea magnesium stuff. And they're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> right? like, nobody can find it, but How it's right here. Let's, let's put it in a <laughs> you know, gallon bucket and sell it to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I now know why that it was recommended that if you're going to use the industrial stuff, that there's only like very limited uh, uh, solutions out in the market. It's because magnesium chloride dirty. is dirty, 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 dirty. It's super hard to find. And in fact, there's a whole period of time where people were using, I think, Tech M to kill Bryopsis. And the whole premise behind it wasn't that uh. magnesium kills it. It's the fact that there's impurities in the magnesium check M that is actually wiping out the brass. Yeah, because you try if you try to do the same 1500, 1600 magnesium level using like BRS magnesium or something, work. it just wouldn't work. But something about Kent. Yeah. It wasn't the magnesium and the chloride, dude. It was something else that was yeah. in there, dude. And I now know why. Is man. it just the magnesium? chlorides that are really dirty or the magnesium sulfates are probably both. Okay, one thing before we're gonna finish this magnesium thing in a second. He had a slide up there I wanted to show you. So when we showed you the dirty uh, calcium chloride, right, or the dirty calcium, so this is an example of, uh, show the liquid one first actually, uh, right next to it. Yeah. We say this a lot, but you know, if you can <laughs> see it with the naked eye, it's not a trace element. I didn't need a ICP report to tell me this isn't for me. So you can see right in the middle there, like that yeah, is aquarium that one that yellow, is uh, yellow. Yeah. Why would I use yellow, like or brown, you know, solution when the two next to it yeah. are crystal clear? If this was, if these were beakers of drinking water, would anybody? 
per choose on purpose, purposefully choose the middle one. I'd almost choose to drink that before I would choose to pour it in the tank. Because <laughs> uh, who knows what that stuff is? Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay, so uh, uh, then it also settles out, by the way. So you could have zero sediment at the bottom of the cone, or you could have this. Uh, you could have all this garbage. So all that brown stuff, it eventually actually ends up clear. Yeah, so when All you, that, though, is going in the tank. So with that beaker of brown stuff, when you pour it in a settling cone and give it about 24 hours, this is what you find at the bottom. Okay, so again, here is the question is like, well, you know, what if it was a lot cheaper? Uh, maybe I would be willing to, uh, you know, dose this dirty brown stuff to my tank. The fact of the matter, this was like the most expensive one. Uh, so the most expensive one is the, the brownest. The <laughs> so, so I no, I don't I don't understand why that is the case. But let's go to the magnesium. Okay. Bed. I forgot those two slides there. Bring up the magnesium slide. So dirtiest so, of all. This one, man, all over the place. And Brightwell actually won this one in our eyes, and it mm -hmm. actually forced us to uh, up our game. But, you know, you look at this, and, you know, some of these things have 11 parts per million aluminum. Some of them have 760 parts per million boron, 8,100 parts per million calcium. Calcium is an indicator that this hasn't been purified at all because they make, mm. uh, it's a, a calcium impurity. They haven't even bothered to take it 50, out. 8,100. Okay, oh. 77 parts per million iron. Uh, it's got 1.7, uh, you know, like, or 8.2 parts per million heavy metals, mm. 1,100 parts per million lithium. You know, like, this is wildly different. Why? And the, the Roadrunner and the 8,300 are at uh, driveway for uh, driveway ice melt, right? Yeah, so this is people, like, we, we were wondering, you know, everybody, you see this all the time. Is this brand of magnesium okay? Is that brand of magnesium okay? And the answer, always is well i don't know you know people yeah. say that on the forums but i've used bulk stuff just fine before which is almost like permission go use the 1100 parts per million lithium that you don't know you're using okay so the nature of this one mm. is uh this is the one where we felt like brightwell actually edged out brs just a little bit if i had to say man which one of these was the best now that doesn't include price of course mm -hmm. but yeah. if you look at that one you go watch that episode you can see magnesium man is the one area the where board. you definitely want to try to get the best available out there because the worst available out there is terrible well that brings up the that brings up the question of okay so is all of this, uh, is it some kind of fear mongering or is it actually going to, oh, but you know, how many people have dosed the, the, the brown product uh, to their tank for many times and nothing died. So is it, it about a single dose and then killing your tank? That is the big piece. Is yeah. it poisoning men? Like, uh, like I poured rat poison in there or is I, am I making just slow accumulations that after 15 months of doing this, it will suddenly, mm. you know, build up or bioaccumulate inside of the, the organism and then kill it. Answer is we don't know. But the real answer is it doesn't matter if it's also the cheapest option. It only <laughs> matters if you're asking me to pull more money out of my wallet. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're telling me to keep it in there and have that benefit. <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. If you, and so if, if again, man, we're, we're hitting it here. Uh, it's one of these two parts is speaking to you at some point in time in this mix, man. It, you're paying for water, paying for trace elements. How many parts, how many dosing pumps? How do you address salinity? How do you address pH? Uh, and does Purity. the quality and contaminants uh, matter to you? We got hard lessons now. Here's what we've learned since 2015. So that is like the things that matter most since 2022, but we've also had some really hard lessons since 2015 that we should share with you. Yeah, can you bring up the alkalinity uh, chart, the last one? Uh, so first hard lesson, baking soda, that A and E, one H, Arm & Hammer, off the shelf, it just isn't that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, you know, uh, I've used it before, I've used it before, uh, baked it and used it on its own, yeah. So I used to bake baking soda to turn it into soda ash in mm -hmm. my house. Yeah. And then like, I, I don't know, man, I, I, maybe I fear monger myself. 
but uh, like I was baking it in there and then I'm like, uh, I don't know, man, I made cookies on that, ch that mm. sheet last time and this thing's made out of metal, it's salt and made can some out of metal. And then I was like, oh, well, what if I use some clean tin foil? And then I'm like, mm. uh, I don't really know if the tin foil is aluminum. And then like, I don't know how long am I supposed to bake it? There isn't really a clear answer. Yeah. And like each time, like I definitely got different densities, like depending on how much you baked it, it you know, how you'd get a different weight versus out. volume. Yeah. You know, like, that's when we decided to go find Just you know, so consistent sort of, sort of sodium carbonate instead of trying to bake it. Yeah. So like, yeah, you could go buy baking soda, but that's and really only if you want to. You I know. mean, so I, I think in your alkalinity video when you did this, you kind of did the cost analysis of, uh, of this. I believe, if I remember right, I just watched it today, that the uh, uh, Arm & Hammer uh, baking soda is for that same one DKH, at the time was about uh, 49 cents uh, a month uh, for that. Mm -hmm. And whereas the BRS2 part, uh, or the BRS alkalinity, uh, the farmer grade, $1.10. So <laughs> 60 cents I in savings a month. In baking it, the electricity <laughs> or did. gas. Yeah. Gas, oh, electricity man. just to bake it. So, you know, just because it's the cheapest option and it's not that bad, does that, you know, are you really, do you really need to chase that down? Th this much for sure, dude. Uh, uh, 60 cents a month. Yeah, I've, I've lowered my time now to minimum wage is 50 cents an hour. <laughs> yeah, no way. Uh, so, uh, but if you did, if you did want to use this, my suggestion actually isn't to go buy the box of it at the, at the store. Oh, the bag from yeah, Costco. Yeah, big Costco, old, big giant bag. You just buy like a little seven pound bag. It lasts and almost your entire tank's life. <laughs> yeah, it lasts you quite a long time, man. So if you're gonna go do that, do that. Uh, uh, okay, bring so bring up the same one though. Uh, yeah. However. The washing soda was terrible. Yeah. Uh, and I know this because uh, I actually tested that washing soda at home and mm. it smelled like flowers. And, you know, everybody was like, it says 100% uh, sodium carbonate. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, that like, makes it sound like it's pure. That isn't the case. Yeah, but people are using this for the intended purpose on the box. It's yours isn't for washing soda. Yeah, but it's got seven parts per million aluminum and stuff in it. Like, no way. Okay, and so what I found out later on, uh, just from talking to people that in the industry, uh, like just industrial industry, yeah. is like in instances like this, it, for its purpose, it's made to wash clothes. So like, you know, that run might very well make, you know, general tide one time. And then the next time they're just, you know, boxing, uh, uh, washing, so, soda. washing. So there's no reason to meticulously clean that whole thing. And there's a reason why it smells like perfume when you open the box. Yeah, because yeah. the last run on the conveyor belt was like the detergent. Per perfumed. Uh, yeah. so, and I also learned 100% like, uh, like 100% you know, calcium chloride means that it is calcium chloride. We didn't mix any sodium chloride in there. It doesn't mean that like it doesn't have iron impurities or mercury or any other garbage in there. Just didn't add anything it, to it's, it. It's like it's 100% popcorn and it doesn't have chocolate in it, is what it means. And like it, it, like it, it does not mean that the popcorn doesn't yeah, have impurities salt in it. salt and butter and all yeah. kinds of crap. Yeah, hey, so like 100%. it doesn't have it, 100% has nothing to do with impurities, it's just 100% that uh, thing. So, uh, you know, like, but if you didn't know any better, man, I don't know, the box is telling you it's pure, it seems like. The washing soda. Okay, so another hard lesson we learned was magnesium was the dirtiest. We you already guys just hit saw on that. that yeah. yeah, like there's no question. If there was one area, and especially because you add so much magnesium, uh, and what it ended up doing for us is there was like uh, our provider, there was one step higher uh, of like yeah. dialysis grade stuff. Uh, so we upped our game after that whole thing because I just can't stand being second best in anything here. <laughs> so we upped our game. And so since that period of time, whenever that was a couple years ago, mm -hmm. now we're using even better stuff, man. We should probably redo the test uh, yeah. and get everybody back out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, magnesium is dirty. Magnesium, man, is the hardest thing to source. Anybody from behind the scenes will openly admit it. Uh, it is absolutely true it's the same reason why when the that's the foundation of the company is I, the DIY method none of them man are acceptable except for this one I think we need to repeat that what you said is that you are using more magnesium 
then you are calcium and alkalinity in a single, in that, dose. In a single dose because you know to mix your to mix our, our magnesium solution chloride and sulfate it's it's like five to seven cups of one and like three cups of the other uh, with soda ash and calcium and chloride we're like two and a half cups of, of one or the other so there is by by weight and by you know how much you're using there is more magnesium material which means the nastiest thing that is out there in our hobby is the most uh, that you're probably putting in your tank at one time, a on single dose. Another hard lesson, two-part isn't the most cost-effective approach to uh, uh, calcium alkaline. Yeah, this one is surprising. When you hear me, when you hear say that, hey, two-part, you know, it works for everybody. It's super cheap. It's cheap, one of the cheapest ones out there. But then you turn around and you hear, it's the most expensive options for, or it's the most cost-effective uh, uh, element approach isn't the most cost of, which means it's expensive for some people. Two part, like we said early on, runs the whole gamut. It's uh, applicable to almost every single situation, uh, tank size, you know, demand and all that. But there is a point of diminishing returns when this just becomes costly to run on a large system. Calcwasser, generally the cheapest, no matter what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and uh, calcium reactor, cheaper on uh, super Long. mega tanks, yeah. like where you're, there's some, some ROI at some point for all the equipment that you bought. Yeah. Uh, it's like usually super mega tank, high consumption. Uh, and then two part, you know, comes in kind of after that. It may be the same as Formate and Alpha Reef and, or similar, I don't know. Used on a large scale. Actually, the liquid Alpha Reef was pretty expensive. We saw like 60 bucks a month. Yeah. But the dry stuff that they use now is way, 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 way cheaper. Way cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but when we say that two parts expensive, remember there is a 3 to $4 option a month and then there's a $30 option. The group, you know, there's just, Decide which what you want to pay for. Yeah. Make sure that you're getting out of it what you want. I think uh, probably a, most people will find the the point where man, this is costing me a lot based on my tank size. So you two part might have gotten you there, but that 700 gallon system or that three 400 gallon system that you're. SPS dominated and I'm dumping, I'm going through five gallon buckets of alkalinity and calcium like a month or so. I mean, there's a point where this is just way too much. All right, another hard lesson here is water is expensive. <laughs> if you're buying the liquid solutions, you're, part of that cost is shipping water. A gallon of RODI water produced at your house probably costs you uh, uh, break a piece of a penny off, and that's how much it costs. If you buy it as part of your tooth part, or it's a uh, uh, Andrew Jackson. It's <laughs> another $20 you're gonna add into the cost of it because Painful you water. like that water better than the water at your house. I, d I don't know. Or I just r refuse to mix it. I will tell you one of the things, though, that mm. has changed for me uh, is in the past, you bought beer as two part. You had to get the measuring scoop out two and the and whole and thing. Cups, I had to remember funnels, how much to use. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, we, we I didn't know if people were going to actually even buy these things, but. We made the little pre-tip pair tear strip Single pouches. Use. They're already pre-measured and you just pour them into the water oh, and shake it up. So done. nice. Yeah, okay. After I used it the first time, I uh, like that bulk stuff is garbage. I would never <laughs> Why would do I that. Buy Why would I measure it? Seven pound I'll spend bag. the extra dollar or whatever, man, to not have to measure. I agree. Right? Well, a lot of time that stuff, uh, you know, especially the magnesium, sometimes the calcium, but then, you know, if you buy a giant bulk bag, you don't seal it, right? It kind of gets all clumpy and nasty and. Okay. So this, like for anybody who's still hanging in, you now have a chance to define the future Ooh. of BRS two part. I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to share <laughs> it with the people because we're making this decision right now. Oh yeah, All right. We're considering changing some packaging stuff, and as part of that, I'm personally promoting that we kill the bulk Seven. sizes, right? Like just get rid of it because I don't know anybody who wants to measure with a measuring cup, and mm -hmm. just keep the single use, either a tear strip or something like that but then package those single uses in boxes of 10. You know, mm. so you can maintain the bulk. Uh, it will cost a little bit more, but no more measuring, just tear strip, just dump it in. Never wonder if you have the right amount, all that stuff. 
How many of you would prefer to see single uses packaged in bulk or individually where you just really, really want to hold on to the lowest possible cost, known demand, and get it in bulk and still measure it with measuring cups? <laughs> okay, because right now is your chance. Like, if, if all of you like want to keep the seven pound bag alive, man, I guess we'll do it. Yeah. If all of you are like, Hey, you know what? I would love to see seven pouches uh, uh, instead, uh, and I don't want to measure anymore, and I want to save all the money of not having to buy water, but I want all the ease. Uh, we'll make that happen too. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let us know. I, I can't wait to see. Next one. Uh, another hard lesson, two part wise, is mm. that uh, pH is the best signal for an overdose. Uh, this one was a hard lesson with your war tank. Walking into the office in the morning and you come into a super cloudy tank that you never got a notification for. Yeah, so we used a bicarb mm -hmm. and it like somebody turned the switch on. I don't remember if it was me or somebody else. Uh -huh. I don't know. But somebody turned the switch on. It wasn't me. It was Josh. <laughs> uh, somebody turned the switch on and then just left it on uh, trying to dose some of it. I don't know what the hell. Uh, yeah. But it just stuck on. And it dosed like a gallon of the stuff uh, overnight. Overnight, yeah. Okay. Normally, if it was soda ash, what would have happened is the pH would have spiked to an unsafe point, and the apex would have just turned the damn thing off. Yeah. But because it didn't have, uh, uh, a, well, a trident on it, because the trident wouldn't have done the same thing. Yeah. Alkalinity gets you high, it would just turn the damn thing yeah. off. But because it didn't have, I didn't have a trident, and I didn't have uh, uh, the pH, or didn't have any rise, increase in pH, it just kept dosing and dosing and dosing. And I walked in and it was a cloudy mess, the E170. Luckily, we knew what to do. We did 100% water change mm. out of the 750, and the thing didn't skip a beat, man. But only because I happened to have 100% replacement water from a healthy tank sitting there, right? That's a, uh, the point is here that uh, pH is probably the most uh, or the quickest path to a crash uh, rather than high alkalinity. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why you know, that E170 recovered like nothing ever happened is because it really there wasn't a big pH issue and we were able to drop that alkalinity down qu uh, quickly. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, if you're overdosing or not, uh, monitor your pH. That's why I like a soda ash over a sodium bicarbonate. And we, you know, you, you may, when you say Everybody should have at least a jug of bicarbonate to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, soda ash, will, I imagine that a majority of tanks out there could use some boost to their pH. I mean, not everybody or not a whole lot of people are probably running at like an optimal 8.3. It's rare. So just use soda ash because it's, it's kind of like its own canary if it gets overdosed. You know, it's funny because people <clears throat> debate soda ash all the time, but they don't know that what they're using is helpful soda ash. Like all of those ones that hit eight point or a point two bonus are almost certainly that. Yeah. Right? Uh, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I would use soda ash only now. Like it's a it's a double edged sword. The fact that it raises the pH is also what makes it a little bit more dangerous than uh, uh, bicarb. But it's also the reason why anybody who's running a pH controller, it will never happen to you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and actually, and you actually use uh, less, you know, less solution than uh, a little bit. sodium bicarb oh, yeah. a little bit because you know Half. it's double the concentration. You can dissolve a lot more soda uh, carbonate than bicarbonate. Yeah, I'd rather dose a hundred mils of calcium and alkalinity versus you know two hundred mils. Change up the jugs yeah. twice as often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good point. Mm -hmm. Forgot about that. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, okay, another one, man. This is between 2015 and now. This is pretty close to them, but. Even I didn't understand what high flow meant. So we preach all the time, dose into a high flow area all of your tank, time. dose into a high flow of your tank, dose into everything. Okay, well, you think that that area in your sump is uh, like high flow, but it really is like turning over in there like three times, mm -hmm. right? It's low flow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if, it, if it doesn't disperse like this, it's probably low flow. So here's the deal. You'll know if you're doing it high flow enough or not. Go to wherever the two part is dosing into your tank and go into the bottom of the sump right underneath it. You will see sheets of precipitate and crud down there uh, from the precipitating for happening from dosing way too much, uh, uh, specifically the alkalinity, to the tank too fast, super duper high pH, and it's pulling 
precipitate out and it just you know creates this crud. Yeah. Now if you put in a power head, so it doses like literally right into the stream of a power head and mixes it up and preferably not in a small area but like the main chamber of mm -hmm. the sump, you will see that you never see that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it's because you're increasing the there's two fold fold. One, you're increasing both the pH and the alkalinity localized area pretty high. Now, it's less of a concern if you have a dosing pump that's like the BRS ones. Super like, slow. You know, these things are like, I mean, they well, like, feel like dinosaurs, man, because they're like, you know. They're all big and bulky. And well, they're like, like the dosing technology. pump. I mean, they've been around for 15 years. They're not like smart. You put them on a timer or whatever. But they also are the only ones that goes, Drip. And nothing else. Drip. Like I can get a dosing pump drip. to turn it down a drip like that, but it also has the ability to go way up there. So the, like the dose will go down that far. Uh, I'd assume the Versa goes down that far. I haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't tried that. Uh, you could probably do the uh, uh, Camor mm -hmm. all the way down to that area, the SMTP. Yeah. But like all the other ones, like the Bubble Magus and the uh, other ones that have the big four heads or three heads on them, they're like just and they just squirt, squirt it in there. there. And, then and if you're wondering right now, you don't have to take our word for it. Go to your sump. Go look under wherever it is. And if there's a bunch of crud there, uh, question answered. Uh, mm. It's dosing it too fast and to a too low flow of the area. Start by getting a dosing pump. Also start by putting it into an area that's bigger so it dilutes mm. faster. Uh, but, you know, just dumping it in there, man, uh, is uh, not going to produce the best result. A uh, really good question is, uh, you know, uh, dosing above the return pump, is that a good idea? Uh, from a standpoint of dis dispersing the uh, solution really fast, absolutely. From a standpoint of building up calcium carbonate inside of the return pump your and heart, watching it get clogged. The heart of your tank? Yeah, yeah. terrible idea. Because <laughs> uh, it, will, it will build up. Yeah. So I, in my own tank, I used to dose it in, uh, I didn't have a sump on my first tank, and so I would dose it right into the power head, uh, right into the tank. Oh, yeah. I'm not really worried about it, you know, like I'm gonna have to clean that dosing pump a little bit more often oh, now. The power head, yeah. But it really doesn't even suck into the pump because the propeller's spinning it out here and in it and just out. kinda goes out. Yeah. But in a return pump It's gotta go it, through it's gotta go through it mm -hmm. and there's heat in there and friction and it's way, it's way more likely to build up. Rife for precipitation. Yeah, yeah. so uh like I could you do it? Yeah. Would I recommend it to you? No. Ah, ah, how about uh, this for an option? And I th think you can do it. Uh, I'd have to look at them. Um, adaptive reefs uh, inline manifold where that has ports to dose something into. So I thought about that for a minute, not just the manifold, but like I thought about what if I put a maxi jet in there? And for those of you that are dinosaurs like me, you'll know that a maxi jet has a little air pump yeah. on the top of it. Yeah. What if I put my quarter inch tube right into the intake of that and it would just suck right through that 1200 gallon an hour pump? Yeah. Yeah, except for it's probably going to clog. It's probably right there. It's going to slowly build up precipitate inside of the, that tube. Yeah. I just don't think you ever are going to want to have the two-part uh, tube submerged at all. You're always going to want to have it, you know, out of the water. Otherwise, you're going to get precipitate building up inside oh, yeah. of the tube. And it will take months for you to catch it. Yeah, I think that that the manifold would probably do that too. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Uh, next hard lesson we learned is that uh, uh, today's dosers are too fast. We kind of talked about that. Uh, that's why the tried and true, you know, $60, $70 BRS 1.1 mil. That's what I started with. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I still have those somewhere, but yeah, solid. Uh, just uh, overdosing is not a problem when you use something that can only go that slow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so hard lesson, this one actually was a good lesson. Uh, we stumbled uh, on alkalinity yeah. as a measurement of success. It's a really big one. Yeah, so we stumbled upon the fact that uh, the two part that you're dosing, if you do something good, uh, it will start uh, consuming more. Your It'll happen drop. in a single 24 hour period. I mean, like if I cranked up my lights 20%, meaning I'm adding more photosynthetic energy and pretend that the corals actually like that, 
they're going to consume 20% more calcium and alkalinity. And it's obviously not linear, like one for one for yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. it will do that. If I extend the photo period out and the corals like that, it will do that. If I raise the pH from you know 7.8 to 8.3, all of a sudden my increased uh, consumption of two part will go up 50%, right? Uh, and so what we found is the amount you have to dose here is like an indication of everything that you are doing right or wrong with the tank. Uh, it is probably the best pulse of, I made a change to the tank and the tank liked likes it. It, it didn't or like it. it, yeah. Well, I, uh, I mean, I think our consumption changed, uh, was it 20, 30, maybe 50 mils? Because uh, I, I think when we first discovered this, we might have been at like 150 mils a day on the 160. And then all of a sudden, like we check uh, alkalinity and it's dropped. And we had to bump it up to, you know, 20 or 30 mils beyond that. But yeah, uh, I think that. It is the best possible way to know whether or not you're doing anything right or wrong with the tank. And it could be as subtle as, you know what, I decided I want to crank up the UV and mm. the reds and the greens in my LEDs. Well, watch your two part, man. Watch your consumption. If you have a trident, watch whether or not in the graph, whether or not the alkalinity uh, in calcium are going up and down with it. You'll see it in the alkalinity a lot faster than the calcium. So. You know, find out the answers to those questions because it, how much is calcifying and how much is sucking out of the water, the best pulse on doing anything right or wrong. All right. So, all that said, if you didn't figure out which two parts ready for you today, uh, either confirm the one that you're on is uh, your best one or uh, wrong, uh, you weren't paying attention, I think. <laughs> There's got to be enough information for you to make that decision. Uh, but... What we actually said in uh, a better way oh, of calcium yeah. alkalinity episode, better way, is that Kalkwasser is actually better for a vast majority. majority of people. You can actually find that episode right here. So go check it out. Find out. We go through formate. We go through calcium. We go through or, uh, calcium reactors, two part, all of it. Hydroxides. One of these things, man, is actually the right solution for you. And you can go find it out here. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>